Hey there, today we're talking Mandalorian Chapter 3. Let's talk. So we have Mandalorian Chapter 3 dropped. Um, we we were, on a side note here, we were at the theater we went and saw Ford vs. Ferrari um, the other day. And wow, what a good film. Just fun, laughing, excitement, you know, the... The thrill of racing and a little tragedy thrown in between everything else. Just a great, great film. But while we were at the theater, um, they did, they are selling um, cups already for Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. They got this side, which is Kylo Ren, Dark Side, et al. And uh, <clears throat> then Ray and, I don't know. Resistance, rebellion. I don't, I don't really call them light side because there's really no no light to it at all. But um, then you can get your lid, whatever lid you want. Of course, Mrs. Tech Show had to have the Kylo Ren because it's as close to the dark side figure as we can get with you know Darth Vader and the like her favorite character, which is you know Darth Vader. Okay, so I'm flipping the spoiling zone banner on because. We're just going to dig in and talk out the Mandalorian. So let's go with wide. Hit the spoiler banner on again. Okay. So we know from the last episode that um, we'd got the child. And they head to back to the ship. The ship's been torn apart by Jawas. Which it was kind of a filler episode. So you can't... <sighs> they could have skipped getting everything torn off the ship. And have him just get in the ship and go. But no, we had to have everything ripped off the ship. The jaw was the egg and blah, 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 and then come back and put it all back together. Um, I just wish it wasn't such a filler episode so soon, right? You, every show, right, you're going to have to have a filler episode at some point. You want to maybe give the audience a breather from what's happened, something giant's happened, so then the next episode you give them, okay, let's give a relax and relaxation, give it a little breather to the audience thing. But after episode one, or chapter one, whatever they're calling it, I'm over it. But after that, there there was nothing. There were no big pieces that we had to relax or get over or get past or anything else. So anyway, now we're off to chapter three, which is you know, he's delivering the child to uh, the Werner Herzog character who is known as uh, the client, okay, so who evidently works for the remnants of, of the Empire. He takes his Beskar steel and forms a new set of armor. Then he heads back uh, to Grief Karga who, to get some more, another job, to go get another job, to go and collect more bounties. Um, and on his way out from there, he realizes, I wonder what they're doing with the little Baby Yoda, because we don't really have a name for the Baby Yoda other than Baby Yoda. Okay, so he does that, um, comes back, fights off the bunch of stormtroopers, gets Baby Yoda, finds Baby Yoda in a medical bed. Um, the one medical guy that's there says he saved his life. Okay, so then we come back, use the uh, Songbird's little weapon that has a bunch of little rockets, kind of like an Iron Man thing that pops out of his shoulders that have all the little rockets go out. Same thing, but it's in his wrist. Um, kind of thing. So as he's wandering out of town, trying to get back to his ship, we get to all the other <clears throat> uh, bounty hunters in the area from the bar uh, got alerted that he is taking the baby and they want the baby, the baby Yoda back. So they're all going to try and stop him. And he gets pinned down, can't get out. He's stuck in this little moving, you know, bed and everything else. And he's, he's stuck and he can't get out. And lo and behold, all the other, this kind of actually was good, kind of took me a little bit by surprise. All the other uh, Mandalorians that are there come flying with their jetpacks over and save him and let him get out and, and get away. Then there's one more last encounter with Grief Karga. Um, and the Mandalorian um, was easily defeats him, which, uh, okay, you can easily defeat him, I guess. That's fine. Since we just got out of the other situation with all the other, you know, bounty hunters, we got through that. 
um, and had to have help, which was good, which I like that he had to have help. If he was able to do it 100% against all these people by himself, I would have thought that would have been, okay, we're make, creating an invincible character here, which is not, you know, not interesting, right? So he had to have help, get out one-on-one. -on -one. It's no big deal for him. He can get through Grief Karga. And then flies off at the end, and at the end he sees the other Mandalorian with the little jetpack, and he mentions that he's got to get one of those, kind of like a, a Boba Fett thing, right? He's got the little jetpack on and can fly around. Okay, so still a, a short episode, still a shorter episode. Um, if you would have taken like the middle episode, chapter two, gotten rid of that and put in one and three together and made a full episode, um, that would have been good. But I think for whatever reason, Disney's kind of breaking them apart into really smaller chunks. And I, I, I don't get that, but I, I guess I'm okay with it for now. Um, I'm hoping that a lot of the other shows that they're doing um, for Marvel and um, any of the other ones that they're doing aren't going to be these little 30-minute kind of vignettes, you know, like not really full episodes, but just little tiny pieces broken down. Because um, Marvel, I would think we could do just a full, you know, 45, 50-minute episode and, and have enough content and things happen. You know, even here they could, you know... I guess if they wanted to go a longer story arc, I don't know, because there's only eight episodes. So still, we're, if, you, if you're skipping two and you're doing one and three, that's only leaving us, you know, five more episodes at, at 25 to 30 minutes of content apiece is not, is not much. So, I mean, that's really my only criticism here. I mean, I don't, I, the episode had great action. It had a good flow through it, right? It had... He delivers the baby. He they show you that he has a he's got a conscience for children. I mean, he was a child at once, you know, at one time who was left, and his parents were killed. We we're thinking they were killed. I, I don't know. We hear them leave him in, and here we see them leave him in a a like shelter, and then you they close the doors, and then seconds later. You hear an explosion, so I'm thinking that means that his parents are dead, but we don't know for sure, but we're going to assume that. So his origin is from family tragedy as a young child, and then working and going and then becoming a Mandalorian. <clears throat> so, and he seems to always, whenever he takes the Beskar steel in to get it refined and milled into a piece of armor, he's always concerned about the foundlings, the younglings, uh, bringing up because he was one once, came out of tragedy. So you're seeing him kind of relate that to the tragedy of the baby Yoda, because we have no name. The baby Yoda that also seeming from tragedy, no parents being left somewhere, being used as a pawn of the system. And so that kind of plays on him that he's, you know, he gets to that point, right, in in the ship where he's here in the ship and he's about ready to take off he's about okay i'm gonna go i'm gonna leave and he picks up the little ball that was on the lever that's there that the baby yoda had this little ball that's right there and he let's see if i can draw something here okay this little ball that's on there um he takes that and has to screw it back on to the top of the little arm there. <clears throat> and that's kind of reminding him, yeah, you left the kid back there. You don't know what they're going to do with him. And <clears throat> you were a kid once. Did you want your parents took so much care to care for you? Are you going to leave the kid? So that leads us to the, the rest of the episode. So we, we have a little bit of character development in that... He doesn't want to leave the kid, the baby Yoda, laying there. So he has some kind of a heart. He has some kind of um, compassion towards, you know, kids and, you know, young ones and, and things like that. So we, we get that from him. And he doesn't want to have to 
leave the kid, so he goes back. Okay, so that's good. I mean, I like that we're getting some some character development in 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 that. We don't, and we now know he has a group, or he has a clan of other Mandalorians that they come to each other's rescue, um, and maybe at some point we'll see him come to the rescue of another Mandalorian at some point. So in the different series. But we'll see. But at least there's something. At least there was something other than just them meandering across things and nobody saying anything. There was actually a little more dialogue. There was actually a little more action that we could get into. So am um, I really rating this one at 8 out of 10, maybe even 8.5? I mean, you know, I don't want to go as high as 9, but, I mean, a good 8. I mean, so the first one I was giving 7 out of 10. The second one kind of a 6 out of 10, maybe. And then this one, 8 out of 10, is definitely getting better. For me, I, I'm I'm loving it. I'm re I'm really liking the show, so and we'll see where we go from here. Hopefully, we'll continue with the getting better part. Um, and and the real uh, and of course the real tragedy is that is that is this taking away from what you know the last Jedi is going to be because you know, rumors and everything notwithstanding anybody who's out there watching any content on star wars is watching all of the rumors and things go back and forth about that it's bad they're doing reshoots they're doing re-edits i mean all movies go through reshoots and re-edits um but and some movies even go through different versions like they'll have this version and this version and this version then they play them all out and see which does a better audience uh impact which one gets a better audience score for when they're doing these things but i don't know we'll have to see when uh, last jedi comes out i mean we do have tickets to the one of the fan events not the full marathon um disney kind of screwed a lot of people out of tickets by not releasing them when they said um but we did get a uh tickets to one of the fan events which was which was actually pretty easy to do um the other the other thing that kind of I was also looking at with I know this is supposed to be a uh, uh, just a um, video about the Mandalorian, but I I often go to Cinemark, my f local theater, and I go okay, let's look at what the seats that are sold, and if I go to let's see if I do this, how we okay, so we're okay here. So if I go to, say, not the opening weekend, but the next weekend, Friday night, the second weekend, and go to the 8.30 showing, um, there's only six seats sold. So this is the prime showing. This is 8.30, Friday night. There's only six seats. So uh, let's go to Saturday and go to the 8.30 prime showing. I mean, there's no seats sold. So, I mean, that's the, okay, we'll go to, what's the next good show? There's, I don't want a D box. Let's go to the 7 p.m. XD. There's one seat sold. So, I think so many people are waiting to see what the initial response is. And that's going to be a huge problem, I think, for, for The Last Jedi, is you have all these people who are saying, wow, this, the Mandalorian is good and it's getting better and I really like this. I'm some trepidation, right? I'm like, okay, hopefully it'll stay good and not go a little crazy, but it's so far it seems good. I mean, there's, there's three episodes. All of them are likable on the positive side, one a little low, but there seem to be, maybe we're going to be getting better now, but I mean, the second weekend of this zero seats zero i mean literally you're you're watching this i'm not i haven't planned this i haven't gone and checked this this is my theater that i go to oxnard river park this is the saturday afterwards um and there's zero seats so we can go let's check the xd version on friday night uh there's the one seat so uh, 11.30, somebody going to a cheap matinee. One seat. Somebody's buying this one seat. I, I don't know why that is. But anyway, so like 
uh, a 1 p.m. The D box. Nobody buys D boxes. Uh, most of my theaters, there's nobody's buying the D box. Uh, 1 p.m. I'm just checking different screens. Zero. So I, I don't know how they could say that this movie sold more tickets faster than some other movies because when we tried to get second weekend uh, end game seats, it was a struggle. We couldn't do it. We couldn't find any. I mean, it was this theater was like all these seats were just packed. So this is going to be a word of mouth movie. And if the word of mouth starts with this is horrible, don't go, then all these seats are going to be empty and this thing's going to really, really die. And China is the other big one. How well, I mean, The Last Jedi set a record for, you know, the largest second weekend drop, the quickest any movie has ever been removed from the theater in China. Two records, not ones you want to have. So we're going to go see it. I'll talk about it. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I really want, I would love it to be, There's. I'm split about it. I'm, I want it to be good, but in some ways I want it to be so horrible that no one actually goes and sees it so that Lucasfilm will get the hint of, look, Mandalorian's doing incredible. Mandalorian is amazing. Mandalorian people want to see. Mandalorian people want to go to if it were in the theater. Like, people what people are watching this. You know the numbers, right? There isn't any... I mean, you're tracking what people are watching and how many people are watching and how many times people are watching in your system, in the back end of your system, right? So when we get to Last Jedi and it turns out being a complete bomb... Maybe you'll understand what we want in, I mean, Kathleen Kennedy in her interview, latest interview said, hmm, we listen to the fans. We know what they're doing. We, we, we talk to them. Well, not, not really. You don't. Because you had to bring in, you know, the cartoon guy, cartoon Star Wars guy and the Marvel guy to make a TV series that we like. All right. <sighs> Well, anyway, so I'm definitely rating this one 8 out of 10, this Mandalorian 8 out of 10. Much better. I liked it much better. Better action actually caught me off guard a little bit when all the Mandalorians came back over. So I'm hoping that the next one's going to be just as good and continue this, continue a path. I mean, if you can continue a path of 7s and 8s and maybe a 6 here and there, I'm good. I'm, I'm totally happy with it, right? Okay. Well, I'm going to close this one out real quick because we're many minutes over. Because of my Last Jedi, or Star Rise of Skywalker kind of rant there. But anyway, thanks for watching this one. Like, share, subscribe, all that stuff to all your favorite small YouTubers and help them out. All right. Take care.